Питер Уэстербака. Thank you. Yeah, so it's uh, great to be here. So it's my first time in uh, Novosibirsk, and it's actually first time in Siberia. And uh, yeah, so far so good. So uh, it's actually told uh, uh, that you have this kind of like joke here that you know uh, asking that what business you're in uh, or if you're in the snow business. And of course, we're not in the snow business; we're in the show business, but we're still here in Siberia. So yeah. Anyway, uh, if you look at Angry Birds. Uh, uh, Angry Birds launched in uh, December, actually 11th of uh, December 2009, so a uh, bit over four years ago. So uh, kind of like a while ago, if you think about it as a game, but uh, kind of like if you look at the, the bigger picture, it's actually a very short uh, period of time. And Angry Birds uh, uh, is now the most uh, distributed piece of entertainment content ever. So we now have, uh, in four years, uh, generated more than two billion downloads of Angry Birds. So it's bigger than anything in games, anything in music, anything in video. Uh, so it's pretty big. But uh, as I always say, it's, it's, uh, it's a good start. So we're only getting started. But uh, maybe uh, before I go into kind of like some of the things that we're planning to do, uh, kind of like a short recap of, of, kind of like the history of Angry Birds and Rovio. So, uh, uh, Robio actually started already 10 years ago, uh, in 2003. And uh, one reason why I love talking about uh, uh, at these kind of events is that uh, Robio as a company got started as a student project. So, uh, in 2003, I organized uh, a small uh, uh, game making competition, and it was actually uh, organized at an event not too different from this, actually, uh, an event called Assembly uh, in Helsinki in Finland, where you have uh, something like four to six thousand people uh, get together every year to play games, to make games, to make demos, stuff like that. And in 2003, we organized a competition to build uh, the best possible mobile multiplayer game. And uh, those of you who were kind of like in the business 2003 remember that that's when uh, Nokia. Uh, we're still making phones, and uh, they came out with their uh, first uh, smartphones. So, you know, way before the iPhone and uh, the App Store and all of that. So, in this competition, uh, Niklas and two of his friends, the founders of Rovio, uh, they took part in the competition. They were students at Aalto University at the time. They created a game called uh, King of the Cabbage World. They won the competition. So I was in the jury, you know, like picking, picking the winners. So it's like really a uh, tough competition, but they built uh, kind of like the best uh, mobile multiplayer game in that competition. Then after the competition, uh, they came uh, to me. I was actually working at HP at the time. And then, uh, you know, being students, they wanted uh, kind of like some advice that, okay, what should we do now? Uh, you know, won the competition and uh, all of that. So I, I told them that uh, I'm a big believer in doing... Uh, you know, what you love. You should always uh, love what you do. So uh, these guys clearly uh, loved making games, loved playing games. So I said, okay, why don't you start a company to make games? It's easy. And uh, they did. So Rovio got started in 2003. Okay, it turned out that it wasn't like that easy. Uh, 51 games later, Angry Birds. So Angry Birds was like the 52nd game. And it took, you know, uh, more than six years uh, to get there. And I think... Uh, uh, that's pretty typical, uh, not only in games, but in any business, that there are very few overnight you know, success stories. So we, we had to uh, do a bit of practicing before uh, creating Angry Birds. Uh, but yeah, so again, uh, the event where Angry Birds uh, or Rovio as a company got started was not too different from what we have here. And actually, um, uh, good question because of that. So who here will create the next Angry Birds? So who, who here in this room will create the next Angry Birds? You? Yeah? 
So at least there's one guy that believes that he can do it. But I mean, this is very important that any of you can do it. There's no reason why the next Angry Birds couldn't come out of like Novosibirsk, Siberia, just as well as it, you know, came out of Helsinki, Finland. Uh, and I think this, this is something that again, very important to keep in mind that uh, uh, today, kind of like in, in this time of uh, the iPhone and Android and app stores, these kind of games, these kind of success stories can come from anywhere. So there's kind of like no reason why you couldn't do that. And uh, I always ask this question kind of like wherever I go. And typically there are very few people who kind of like dare raise their hand. But if you kind of like look at how Rovio got started, there's no reason why you couldn't. I mean, Niklas and two, uh, two of his friends, they were students uh, when they started Rovio. Okay, it took six years and then uh, got to, uh, to release Angry Birds. But again, you know, uh, if, if we can do it, so can you. And you have to kind of like have that, that kind of attitude. There's no reason why not. So you can definitely do other businesses here in Siberia than, you know, snow and stuff. So, uh, you know, uh, no reason at all why you shouldn't. But yeah, so Angry Birds came out uh, 11th of December 2009. Okay, initially um, uh, we actually got it to number one in Finland in the App Store, and this was uh, uh, was pretty easy actually because uh, at that time, uh, you know, Finland country of Nokia and not too many iPhones. So it was enough to tell friends and family that, okay, why don't you go and download, you know, this new game and then, you know, number one in the app store in Finland. Uh, so, you know, not too difficult. It's, I guess it's called like viral marketing or something like that. But uh, yeah, so, uh, so we managed to do that. And then uh, uh, after that, we became uh, number one in Sweden. We actually uh, got a bit lucky there because uh, it, that was, uh, uh, the 2010, uh, you know, um, uh, Winter Olympics in, in uh, Vancouver and then Anja Persson, uh, she's a fairly well-known uh, Swedish skier. She actually fell and couldn't take part in, in the games. And then she did an interview for Swedish TV saying that, you know, it really sucks, that it's super boring. All she can do is, you know, like be at the hotel, but at least there's Angry Birds, number one in Sweden. So, you know, again, uh, 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 you have to have a bit of luck like that. And then uh, after that, Apple kind of like saw that there was something going on. So they featured us in the UK, then in the US and went to number one. And uh, I think very important thing uh, that time that we then, you know, hit uh, uh, 500,000 downloads and then, you know, million, two million, three million and so on. But uh, at that time, uh, actually first time that we said that, okay, with Angry Birds, we're going to get to 100 million downloads. And then everybody told us that, you know, like, you guys are crazy. There's no way, you know, you can get to 100 million downloads. Only Tetris has done that, and it took them 20 years. But uh, actually, we, we uh, of course, you know, now looking at it, we, we did hit 100 million. We actually did that in just 15 months. So uh, first 12 months of Angry Birds, we hit uh, 50 million downloads. Then Christmas uh, 2010 happened, we added another like 25 and then in March uh, we hit 100 million. And the second 12 months of Angry Birds we actually did 550 million downloads. So, um, you know, again, not too bad. But uh, one, one thing also that we learned from kind of like making the other 51 games, we also, uh, I think, uh, uh, understand pretty well how difficult it is to make hits, to make a hit game. And it's equally difficult, you know, in other areas of entertainment, you know, take music or movies or, or all of that. So uh, when we had a hit, we decided to go all in and put all our kind of like resources, everything we got behind Angry Birds. So we didn't do what a lot of people, you know, tend to do that when you have a hit, you kind of like get carried away with, uh, by your own success and you think that, oh, you know, it's easy, so let's make another one. We know that it's very difficult, so we actually decided to do more around Angry Birds. So we bought an animation studio. Uh, we launched our uh, first animated series um, uh, about a year ago. And the way we launched that is that we added one button to all our games. So overnight we created uh, one of the biggest video distribution networks on the planet by adding one button, you know, the Toons TV uh, button that I'm sure that you've seen if you play Angry Birds. 
and of course you know uh, of course you do uh, so so uh, and it's actually okay to play Angry Birds here while I while I talk so I don't kind of like mind at all but yeah anyway uh, we added that button and by doing that we uh, created a very very big video distribution network within our games and in the first year we hit two billion uh, views for our Angry Birds tunes animated series and right now we are in the process of adding more uh, animations by ourselves but also um, third-party content so we have uh, uh, National Geographic there we have Fraggle Rock we just added uh, Chakra which is the latest uh, creation by uh, Stan Lee so Stan uh, also created things like you know Spider-Man Iron Man uh, a few of these things that you might have heard of so he now launched his new series uh, in Angry Birds. So I think that it's uh, very interesting when you look at how the world is changing that now you have new content, new animations launching kind of like within a game. So we, again we don't view Angry Birds as a game. It really is of course a brand but it's also a distribution platform for other games, for uh, other you know uh, animations. So what we're building is uh, something like the Cartoon Network, but much bigger and for the first screen. And the first screen, obviously, the phone and the tablet. So uh, the world is changing uh, very, very fast. And again, uh, um, you can do this kind of thing, you know, anywhere. You don't need to be in the Silicon Valley or, you know, LA or whatever, or Helsinki, you know, you can be here as well. So, so uh, I think that's something that's very important. Then uh, we also uh, expanded into consumer products, so you know, like these kind of things. And uh, we now have tens of thousands of Angry Birds branded products out there. Uh, everything from toys to soft drinks to uh, t-shirts. So. Um, and actually, you should all copy this guy here because, you know, uh, I've only seen one Angry Birds t-shirt here. So, you know, like we clearly need to do better. But yeah, anyway. Uh, so, um, yeah, so we launched uh, into consumer products. And uh, if you look at our no the latest numbers that we published uh, are, are numbers from uh, 2012, 45%. So almost half of our business physical products. So, uh, again, uh, a lot of companies come like in our, our business say that in a few years all of their business will be digital and uh, if you look at the Rovio business what we're saying in, in a few years more than half of our business will be physical and um, I think that's also again uh, uh, very very different from what a lot of uh, uh, other people are doing and I think that's at the core of what we do at Rovio we always try to do things differently so you know uh, it's a uh, very very important uh, in any market and especially kind of like if you look at apps and games that you stand out and you kind of like you have to be different if you do kind of like what everybody else is doing it can be very very difficult to have any kind of success so uh, it's very important that you kind of like dare uh, be different and you're not afraid of doing uh, different things new things and uh, uh, Pretty much every step of the way, if you look at what we've been doing at Rovio, people have been telling us that you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, you guys know nothing about the toy business, so you, you know, stick to games. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's something that, uh, again, uh, I think very, very important and kind of like a big part of what uh, we've been doing is that we are not afraid of doing things totally differently from other people. So, I mean, one example, when we launched Angry Birds Space, of course, we launched that game in space together with NASA on the International Space Station. You know, and again, people told us that, hey, you guys are crazy. You can't, you know, like do that. But uh, turned out that it wasn't even kind of like that difficult. And now we have an amazing collaboration with NASA. So, uh, so it's really a, a great partnership. And I was actually in uh, Washington, D.C. a couple of weeks ago, and we met with Charles Bowden, who is uh, the guy who runs uh, NASA. And the feedback that we got from NASA was that uh, it's the best collaboration that they've ever done. So, um, you know, it's pretty interesting going from a game to collaborating with those guys. So I think that's like, uh, it's been, uh, been a lot of fun. But uh, again, uh, we didn't, of course, stop there. Uh, we uh, uh, also uh, 
done some other interesting uh, interesting stunts if you look at kind of like our marketing. So in in June last year, uh, we took over the Red Square in Moscow. I think we're the first brand that has completely uh, rebranded uh, the Red Square. And the reason we did that was that we did a uh, big update to our original Angry Birds game. The, what, what, that was all about the Red Bird. And of course, what could be a better place than the Red Square to launch something like that? So we, we did and we had a party for 40,000 uh, people in the Red Square. And uh, you can see the video on YouTube if you haven't kind of like, uh, seen that uh, yet. But uh, we did that the same day as the high school graduation here in Russia. So we had uh, something like 40,000 high school graduates at the Red Square. We also had uh, a red carpet event at the Kremlin. So of course, you know, red bird, red carpet, red square, kind of like see a trend. So uh, kind of like decided that we want to own the red color. And uh, it was very, very successful and we got like amazing feedback. And uh, this year we're going to do the same for the high school graduation here in Russia in 10 cities. And I guess we might do that here in Novosibirsk as well. Or are we, Natalia? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so we're going to be, have some of our people come here in June as well. Uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, kind of like an example of how we do things uh, at, at Rovio. Then uh, if you look at the company today, uh, so yes, we're not a games company. We're active in all areas of uh, entertainment. So we make games, animation, uh, we have consumer products, we build parks. So we actually have uh, our Angry Birds activity parks on all continents and uh, uh, almost also not like at the, you know, North and South Pole and all that, but, uh, but uh, the others. And uh, we have um, uh, Angry Birds activity parks now in, in uh, uh, all over Europe. We have uh, parks actually in the US together with NASA. So we have uh, Angry Birds activity parks at the Houston uh, Space Center and also uh, another one at the Kennedy Space Center in, in uh, Florida. Uh, I think we're the only entertainment company that actually has a presence on the NASA, uh, NASA like premises which also is an uh, example of how, how great the collaboration with NASA is. And um, yeah, but we, we are active in all areas of entertainment, but we decided not to stop there. Uh, we are also um, active in, in education. So we've been working on our fun learning program for the last three years. And um, what we're doing there, we're combining uh, Finnish education and Angry Birds. So, you know, two great brands and uh, created a uh, fun learning program. And uh, what we're doing there, we're actually working together. We actually went to talk to the Finnish Board of Education. We took kind of the Finnish curriculum. Then we built the full curriculum. So we have everything from math to music to coding. And we wanted to make all learning fun. So uh, we really worked on that. Uh, so we have games, we have books, we have learning environments, physical and digital. And uh, then we also started working with university partners to kind of like show that uh, the fun learning approach uh, works and delivers better results. So we wrote a book about fun learning as well. So we have a big book business at Rovio. I don't know if you kind of like come across some of our books, but we have more than 200 books in uh, more than 40 languages. I think we have almost 40 of our books in Russian uh, nowadays. Actually, saw saw some of them at the local supermarket here in Novosibirsk this morning. So, so they are here as well. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so we we actually um, been working on this fun learning program for for three years. We started uh, rolling it out in China uh, end of last year, and we always start by teacher training. So we're actually training teachers in Angry Birds fun learning. So how to make learning fun. So we're training and certifying teachers. There are 19 million teachers in China, so it'll take us a few years, but our goal, if, of course, is to train them all. And uh, we're also now rolling out uh, our fun learning program in uh, uh, Brazil, and hopefully we can also bring it here uh, to Russia in the not too distant future. So kind of like making lear learning fun here as well. And you know, uh, all of us who kind of like gone through school know that uh, um, it's not always fun and uh, there's actually no reason why it shouldn't be. And I always use the example uh, of uh, boys in Finland speaking better English than girls. And do you know why? Yeah, 
because of the games. They play more games. The games are in English, so they end up learning better, you know, like bigger vocabulary, learning to speak better English just because they're playing games. So they learn while they're having fun. We want to make all learning fun like that. So we then also teamed up with NASA. We're actually bringing out uh, a new alphabet uh, book uh, by astronauts. So there's going to be an Angry Bird Space uh, alphabet book that's been done by the NASA astronauts. And it's, of course, super fun. And uh, then we have uh, um, a collaboration with National Geographic. So we've done uh, some physics books and uh, uh, similar books already with National Geographic, making things like physics fun, which, you know, is maybe not the first thing that most of us think about when, uh, when we hear, uh, yeah, nice green saver. Anyway, uh, so uh, it's not the first thing that you think about when you hear physics, you know, it's not fun. Then we also teamed up with CERN, you know, the guys who run the massive uh, uh, collider in, in Gene uh, outside Geneva. Uh, we're working with the CERN guys to teach kids, you know, five to eight quantum physics. Another thing that, uh, you know, uh, uh, doesn't kind of like maybe sound uh, very excited. So if I would tell you that, okay, you know, like, let's drop the Angry Birds thing now and let's talk quantum physics. Probably would say that, okay, we have another meeting and, you know, like, need to go. But anyway, so we're, we're working on making that uh, fun as well. So in education, we're working with NASA, with National Geographic, with CERN, the Finnish Board of Education. We're working with top universities uh, around the planet to deliver the teacher training. So uh, our ambition is to give the world education. And uh, when I say that, most people think we're crazy, but you can like see a trend there that uh, they also thought we're crazy when we said that we're going to have 100 million downloads for Angry Birds. Now we have two. So uh, we're very, very serious about making learning fun everywhere. And, uh, you know, let's see in a few years, you know, uh, what, we, what we achieve on that front. But if you look at Rovio today, we're really a triple E company. Entertainment, education, and we apply entrepreneurship to everything we do. So that's where you get the crazy ambition and the crazy kind of like uh, scaling in, in, uh, in what we do. So we try to stay true to our kind of like uh, entrepreneurial uh, startup roots. And, and that's something that's very, very important. Then uh, uh, one, one thing, if you look at, uh, again, Rovio. So we are a uh, bit over 800 people nowadays. I always get asked that, okay, you know, and that's still like, that's very small if you look at uh, kind of like the, the global scale and, and the brand presence. I mean, the brand, Angry Birds uh, as a brand uh, is, no, is pretty well known. So uh, 9 out of 10 Americans know the brand, 93% of the Chinese population know the brand, pretty much everybody in Korea knows the brand. I don't know what the percentage is here in Russia, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's maybe not 90% yet, but uh, our, our goal is to be the leading Russian brand. So that's kind of like uh, why we're here. And uh, yeah, the, with the brand, uh, we can go into new areas like the fun learning that I, I described. So uh, maybe not what you'd expect from a games company and kind of like where, where it all started. But that's uh, very kind of like typical for how we do things at Rovio. And then I, kind of like I tend to get a question that, okay, that how exactly do you do it? And, and I say that it's actually, it's very easy because we have more than 800 people at Rovio in Helsinki, in Finland. Uh, all of them know how to walk on water. All of them. Really. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So... Uh, so what do I mean? It's actually, uh, what I mean is that all of them believe, actually they know that they can walk on water because nobody has proven otherwise. You know, that's, that's kind of like, it's all in your head. 100 million downloads, nobody believed us, but then we did that. Now when we do a new game, a new product uh, at Rovio, you just have like one small like, comment there that it will do 100 million downloads. It's like a given. People know that we will do that. But then when you start thinking about it, 100 million is like a pretty big number. But people have gotten used to always deliver at that kind of scale. And then what I, you know, uh, being here in Siberia, you guys know this as well, that, you know, walking on water is very easy. Because most of the year, it's frozen. <laughs> 
so so I think that we can like share that between Finland and Siberia that we all know how to walk on water. So that you know you can definitely create the next Angry Birds here because uh, you have the same same skill as we do. So I think that uh, you know so more people now that think that they can create the next Angry Birds. Yeah, excellent. I mean, you all can, so you know, like, why not? But hey, then one thing also, um, uh, so I, I just thought that I will use the opportunity here to kind of like create a spike in uh, uh, Angry Birds Go uh, download. So that's why we have that image here. So uh, we actually just added a new amazing episode to Angry Birds Go, which fits very nicely here because it's uh, called Sub-Zero and it's all about driving on ice. So not only do we kind of like walk on water, but we also know how to drive like you guys on snow and ice. So you should check out, you know, the Angry Birds Go uh, Sub-Zero episode. And uh, yeah, uh, please download it, check it out. Let us know what you think. So I uh, want to kind of like show the guys back home that we can create a spike in Angry Birds Go downloads. Uh, here in Siberia. So I want them to wonder what happened. But anyway, uh, so yeah, it's okay to download it now. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything and, and, and all of that. Uh, but yeah, so I have, uh, I think, 10 more minutes. So I'll, I'll actually stop talking now. I could go on for hours, as you can probably uh, tell. But uh, as we are in the kind of business of interactive entertainment, uh, more than happy to make it interactive and, and take a few questions. So thanks. And first question, you always get something. Uh, <laughs> almost, yeah. There you go. Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, well, firstly, uh, I'd like to say that uh, I remember the time when I used to be a Nokia, owner, a Nokia phone owner. Uh -huh. And uh, I firstly saw an iPhone and I asked my friend, well, what the phone? And to show me what the iPhone can do, he ran the application Angry Birds yeah. and showed me the game, and I was really excited by this. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so now you got yeah. an iPhone. <laughs> well, yeah, by the way. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the question is, uh, actually, you, uh, during your performance, uh, uh, said a lot about the uh, fact that you took the advantage of uh, the brand Angry Birds and uh, you uh, completed some toys, some mm -hmm. uh, related things, some movies, maybe cartoons. Uh, yeah, the mov first movie is coming in 2016, Fourth of July weekend. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my question is, I'm really interested in the fact, uh, how did you do this hit? I mean, that uh, was it uh, a while try just to, to, to make a 50 second game or was it uh, there some kind of uh, research before making this game and uh, well mm -hmm. the success story of the heat so how, how how did you get to this idea yeah so so if you look at kind of like development of angry birds and kind of like the history of rovio so yeah we made 51 games uh, before angry birds and it's not like all of those games were like bad games. They were actually very good games. We made uh, uh, kind of like uh, Need for Speed Mobile, Burnout Mobile for EA. We did uh, uh, the Bound series of games for you know like the Nokia phone that you had at the time. Uh, more than 200 million of those kind of like distributed out there. But I think that the biggest thing that kind of like happened was that the market changed. The iPhone happened. The App Store happened. So uh, if you kind of like look back, uh, it was. Uh, the timing of starting a company to make mobile games in 2003 was not ideal. It was actually a very bad time to start a company because you had to work with uh, operators, uh, phone makers like Nokia. So if you're a startup, it was actually very tough to get your stuff distributed. So uh, so that's, that's like one thing. So the market became much more available for people like ourselves. Uh, then one thing that uh, I think was different with, uh, with Angry Birds is that we really Kind of like did our homework. So we really analyzed hundreds of kind of like hit games and kind of like really to understand what it takes to make a hit game. And then the plan was that, okay, let's create games for the iPhone until we have a hit and then take it everywhere. So that was kind of like the plan from the beginning. And then uh, uh, with Angry Birds, we were kind of like uh, uh, lucky enough, fortunate enough that, that it actually kind of like worked the first time 
uh, there with the, kind of like the new approach and the new strategy. Uh, Angry Birds itself actually started with the characters. So Jaakko Isola, who is uh, one of our game designers, uh, he had a game design that featured the bird characters. The game was very different from what uh, you know Angry Birds is today, but uh, everybody fell in love with the bird characters and we did, uh, decided that we have to make a game around those birds. And then eight months, 12 people made the game. And uh, yes, I said, it came out in, in December 2009 and now we're here. So that, that's kind of like, you know, short story of how it happened. Yeah. Hello. Uh, kiitos, Peter. Kiitos, kiitos. <laughs> My name is Kirill. Actually, I would like to ask two questions. Mm -hmm. One of them may seem unpleasant, so sorry from the beginning. You said about the collaboration with NASA, but mm -hmm. what can you say about collaboration with NSA? Have you ever heard the rumor in Russian media that you have uh, yeah, it's, it's introduced a, a bug? Yeah, yeah, helped? yeah, yeah. So there's only like one letter difference, NASA. NSA, you know, so, you know, it's easy to mistake the two. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, uh, if you look at, uh, like, okay, the news stories about uh, us collaborating with NSA, so first of all, we're not an American company, we're not collaborating, we're not like obliged to co collaborate with the NSA, so we're not working with uh, any spy organizations, kind of like anywhere, not here in Russia either, so, uh, you know, uh, we're not. Uh, and then uh, uh, if you look at uh, that in more detail, Angry Birds was used as an example. Uh, actually, what was really going on there is that the ad networks, some of them that we are working with as well, are sharing uh, or let's say could be used to get access to information about the users. But I think also, uh, then if you read the headlines uh, about kind of like Angry Birds collaborating with you know, NSA, yeah, a lot of people just read the headline and uh, then they think that it's true. Uh, but I think that, uh, uh, yeah, you should never trust headlines or media in the first place, you know, so you, you can ask us and that's very good that you did. So uh, we're absolutely not collaborating with NSA or any other uh, spy organization. Okay. Only with, we are only working with NASA, not NSA. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. And a uh, second one about... Uh, yeah. Thanks for the <laughs> question, so you get a pick. <laughs> uh, th this is because it's evil question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm expecting to get uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, heard yeah. about Yeah, yeah, you know, one. it happens, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. My older is seven years old boy, mm -hmm. and daily he uh, is exploding with ideas on what would, we d what, what would he do if he would, was developing Angry Birds game. Yes. I would like to ask if there are some forums, uh, maybe yep. media spaces, uh, where he would uh, he could participate mm -hmm. to maybe become one day a Rovio developer or something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Thank you. absolutely. And and one thing, one thing. So this is also very much part of our fun learning program. Last year we worked with uh, Code.org, and we actually introduced 30 million kids in America to coding using our characters. And uh, if you go to learn.code.org, you can find actually coding lessons featuring Angry Birds. So your son could check that out on like how to get into coding. So that's kind of like one thing. Uh, and uh, we're also working on some other um, tools and, and kind of like um, lessons in, in that kind of like uh, area. So not only coding, but kind of like more broadly, 21st century skills, at focusing on creativity, critical thinking, uh, these kind of things. So uh, uh, yeah, there's there are already kind of like a lot of lot of things that you can do in that area. Then also uh, we're um, always um, engaging in kind of like dialogue with our fans. You know, Twitter, Facebook, uh, we contact here in Russia. Uh, so if you have ideas, you can always kind of like talk to us about them and we have even uh, implemented some uh, uh, kind of like user generated uh, levels and things like that so so uh, again for us it's very very important to work with our fans and uh, you know actually one one thing on that we reply to every tweet every email every message that we get and the NASA collaboration you know the Angry Birds space collaboration actually started on Twitter so I had a dialogue with the NASA guys on Twitter, and that's how the game kind of got started. So yes, we take our fans very seriously.
you know, seven-year-olds to NASA, <laughs> you know, both. Yeah, thanks. Hello, Peter. My name is Stepan. Uh, can I ask you, what kind of non-Rovio games do you play? So I, I play uh, probably hundreds of games, and that's kind of like uh, for fun, but also part of the job. So I travel like two thirds of the time and I play a lot of games like in the air. Uh, in the air, of course, uh, most of the time you're disconnected, so you can't play like, uh, more, or let's say a lot of the games you can't play offline, so that's kind of like sucks. Uh, but if you look, look at then kind of like games that I uh, uh, like and, and uh, kind of like, like to play, I, I think that uh, um, the PopCap guys did a great job with uh, Plants vs. Zombies, and I also like it because of, kind of like they have uh, had some success in, in uh, uh, going like a similar route as we with you know, like some uh, non-game uh, related assets uh, and, and kind of like merchandising as well. So that, that's uh, uh, kind of like a very uh, nice one. But yeah, I, I, I try to play uh, as many games as I can for fun and kind of like also for work. Any kind of Russian games? Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peter, thank you. Alexander from Novosibirsk, I'm here. Uh, there, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so yesterday uh, I asked you about what not to do to be a great uh, entrepreneur. You asked it five things, uh, not afraid, so that, and you to see five, not afraid. So yes. let's assume I want to be a great entrepreneur. What should I uh, have most? Uh, I should be smart or courage? I, one, I think one thing. Yeah, what I, should be most smart or courage? I think <laughs> that uh, I would definitely kind of like emphasize the, the courage part. You don't have to be kind of like, uh, super smart to be an entrepreneur. So, you know, like, just look at me, you know, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> but, I, but I think that uh, it helps if you're a bit crazy. That, that's kind of like a, a very useful characteristic, yeah. Uh, hello, Peter, uh, my name is Alexei, and I want, uh, I want to ask you one question. Uh, it's easy to notice that your approach to the entertainment industry uh, is similar to, to Disney company. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing about franchise and so on, uh, but now Disney is not the only cartoon studio. It's not. It's now many much than uh, Entertainment Empire. They bought ESPN, ABC, and now they're shooting Star Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, did your company think to go to to way like this? To what? To what? Uh, sure, but I mean, like Disney uh, managed to buy Lucas before we could. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we started our like Star Wars collaboration and then they panicked and they bought the whole company. So, you know, like, what can I say? Uh, and now they're <laughs> making games about Star yeah. Wars. Yep, not you. But, but, I, but I think that it's, it's very interesting. Of course, Disney is a very interesting model for, for a lot of us. But uh, I think uh, uh, that, that's also one thing that we try to do at Rovio is that we really look at uh, all kind of like the best companies out there and uh, we try to learn. So uh, again, uh, uh, we we know that we we don't know everything, and uh, and uh, kind of like it's very very important for us, uh, you know, that okay, we are active in education, but we're also a learning company, and a learning company in the way that we uh, we try to learn like every day. I mean, as as I said yesterday, that I'm I'm here to learn. I mean, I learned a lot already, and I've only been here like a day and a half. Uh, so uh, so I think that. Uh, there's kind of like no substitute for um, kind of like actually knowing what's going on, you know. So, so it, it's it's really really important to have that kind of attitude. So, I mean, I talked about like the courage and and like being a bit crazy and all that. But I think that another thing that is very important that you have to have kind of like a very open mind. You have to uh, uh, you have to learn. And if you can learn a bit faster than the other guys, then you're typically okay. Uh, I have a very serious question about Angry Birds. Um, do you replay uh, levels to get all three stars? Uh, let's say that I, I don't have I don't have three stars on like every level, but uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, but I, I actually I have three stars on uh, most of them, and uh, and I play all of our games. Uh, I mean that's like you know of course I, I don't think that you can uh, be in any business if you don't kind of like use your own products. I mean it would be uh pretty sad if if you if you didn't so of course i i play 
I play all our games. I play a lot of other games as well. So it, it's it's really uh, it's uh, super important. Hello. Um, so um, and I'll like say, guys, stole my comparison with uh, Walt Disney. Okay. So I had to come up with another question. Okay. Um, sharing a business idea with you. Would you would you like to build a Ravel land like Disneyland? No, but we, we're actually, uh, we are building activity parks. And, and this is again, uh, if you look at uh, uh, Disney, they are investing right now uh, over $5 billion into just their theme park outside of Shanghai. So they're building it in, in a swamp outside of Shanghai. It will open, I think, 2016 or something like that. Um, if you look at that, we, we don't have $5 billion. Uh, so, you know, like can't do that. So we looked at, at kind of like the theme park model and, um, you know, all of you who have been to Disneyland, you know what the experience is like. You go there, you stand in line for two hours, you ride the uh, ride for two minutes and then you repeat it as many times you can during a day or two that you have to stay there because you can like most of the time you spend waiting in line. And of course, now it's much more pleasant because you can play Angry Birds while you wait in line. So it's like even it, sometimes standing in line can be even better than the ride. But anyway, uh, the, the thing there is that, okay, we can't compete with the 5 billion. So we then looked at that, that okay, and we don't want to create an experience where, you know, you stand in line for hours and, and ride the rides, you know, and uh, so we uh, decided to create a distributed model so we are building not one, you know, theme park, but we're building thousands of activity parks, much smaller scale. We want to have them in every city, in every neighborhood. You can walk there, you can ride your bike, you can go to our parks every day. To Disneyland, you might go well, like once in your life, but we want to create not kind of like once in a lifetime, but we want to create lifestyle. So our kind of like approach to theme parks and all that is very different from, for example, Disney. And we think that we will build something that costs less and is better. And if you do that, you win. Yeah. Uh, one fast, really fast question. Can you please pronounce Rovio again? Rovio. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Дорогие друзья, Питер Вестербака. Thank you.